Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome aboard to the virtual collage jam for Monday, July 27th, 2020. Our theme today is Flights of Fancy. So uh, hopefully you've got something queued up that is appropriate or if our prompts are always optional, as you know. So if that doesn't float your boat or fly your plane or fly your kite, I guess, is a better phrase. Um, whatever, if it doesn't work for you, uh, feel free to ignore it and collage on something else that is suits you better. I'm still <coughs> trying to find your live. <laughs> My uh, co-pilot will be uh, up and running in just a minute. We always have trouble finding uh, finding each other's streams for the first couple of minutes, and uh, so bear Which with means us. Everybody else, does yeah, too. everyone else does too. So, um, so today I'm I I, I only have a sliver of a plan. Only have um, a sliver of a plan. Sorry. So. Today, I uh, quickly printed out, if I, I earlier today I did a, I thought, Flights of Fancy, what, what shall I do? And I wrote down a bunch of ideas. Hello, Joy, welcome aboard. <laughs> and uh, jotted down a bunch of ideas. And then I, um, you know, I, as a child, I spent a fair bit of time making, um, being enthralled with flight. Um, I flew um, glide like uh, balsa wood gliders. I made some uh, some very fancy ones. I made some very simple ones. I remember making like buying a, a sing uh, a single wing plane and making a biplane out of like the broken bits of the ones that we had to knock out of the tree with a football and <laughs> smash them. So I had all these pieces. So I thought I could make I could make a biplane. So um, which was kind of cool because it. It really climbed well, but anyway, that's a little aside. Sorry. Um, so I thought I'd I pick, printed out some vintage pictures of the Wright brothers at, at Kitty Hawk, and thought maybe I'll use that. So um, Annie and Val have hey joined Annie, us. Welcome aboard, and hi Val, good to see you again. And uh, Kim is uh, Kim is now on and ready to go. Hey Debbie, how are you? Yeah. Good, she says, it's good to hear you, Kim. And I agree. It's always good to hear Kim. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, and, Debbie. Um, I, I hope you guys... Hey, Gerda. <laughs> Looking for some reusable usable, uh, collage, or watercolor pieces for collage. Yeah, that's a great idea. So, um, In fact, I've next... Theme next week's theme is going to be uh, one one person's trash dot dot dot. So, um, if you have any old findings that you're like about to throw out or maybe not, given that prompt, you can use that next week. And of course, I'll publicize that as I always do in the usual through the usual channels. Um, Oh, you went to Kitty Hawk, Annie? That's great. Um, yeah, that would be amazing, eh? Um, I've never, I've never been. It's like a windswept beach or island, isn't it? Yeah. Hey, Ricky, welcome aboard. Thirty-four degrees. Ooh, that's too warm. <laughs> I am. Uh, I've been looking at the chat, but I'm gonna swing it over to Kim to do the chat, and I'm gonna get uh, more or less set up here. And there we go. Sherry Ricola has joined hey, us. Hey, Sherry. Welcome aboard. Tobacco. Yay. And Alice Berloni hey, Alice. Sa seems happy that she's made it here again. Yeah. Thank so glad you could, Alice. Yeah, good to have you along, Alice. Annie says that it is really windy at Kitty Hawk. Yeah. And they ran the flight path. In fact, some of the photos I was looking at were were one or the other of the brothers, or presumably they're the people working with them, running alongside the plane. Yeah. As, as it, you know, because it wasn't it wasn't exactly the Concord, right? So, <laughs> Jane's joined us. Hey, Jane, says, welcome uh, aboard. Hello, and yeah. she doesn't know why it took her a while to get you. So. Sometimes I, it does. Yeah, Kim and I have both noticed this because we are on another computer for each other, right? So. The per the whenever I go live, Kim it takes her three or four minutes to catch the stream, and it's the same for me when Kim is doing her virtual studio party. So, yeah, you just have to refresh your browser a few times until it shows up. Yep. Um, 
part of it is there is a lag. So if I yeah. play the video I get while you're actually doing it, there's yeah. a, a lag. Yeah. So there's that part of it, but that's a very small part of it. Yeah. So clearly there's just something about um, what's going on at YouTube's end. Yeah. And the internet. Yeah. And it, yeah, it's the internet too. So the traffic. Yeah. Before I get um, <clears throat> stuck in on collaging, <laughs> Um, I wanted to mention that uh, I'm doing a workshop uh, for the Berry Art Club on Wednesday, and it's a three-hour quick hit on uh, hierarchy, um, like creating hierarchy, being aware of how hierarchy works in artwork. In a composition. Um, in a composition, yeah, exactly. And so they have a few spots left, and so they and they. Um, I didn't realize that they made it open for non-members, so it's thirty-five dollars for non-members. Um, so if you're interested, uh, head over to Barry Art Club, um, and you can join me for that on Wednesday. So I have printed some pictures, but I don't really have any ideas. So I'm just going to start looking through them and see what they say to me. I printed out some black because all the stuff for the Wright brothers is black and white. And so I've got those, and I thought I'd leaf through a few magazines to see if there was something that sort of tangentially related. Meanwhile, while I'm busy with that, um, let Kim know, and she can pass it along to me, what you guys are, what your sort of preliminary thoughts are. Are you working with the theme? And if so, what, you, what ideas do you have? Or are you doing something else? Um, let me know that too. And also let us know how the sound is. We're using, we just started using a new mic. So hopefully the sound is, is a little clearer for both of us. So I um, hope it's better. So I'm going to lay these photos out. I printed them a couple different sizes, and apparently I didn't collect the other ones, so I'll go do those, get those. Back in a sec. <laughs> Ricky would like to... The link for the Fairy Art Club. Um, so maybe Kim can can do that. I, I think if you Google, I, I did it just before going live. I just Googled Barry Art Clubs and B-A-R-R-I-E. Um, I'm typing that Okay, in. Kim is putting it in the chat. So And I'll look for the link. And she'll look for the link. So bless you, Kim. Um, but it, yeah, it, doesn't, it comes up easily. Um, I forgot to hit black and print as black and white. So they, they come across this. My second set has come across with this sort of kind of nice green tinge to them. So not not what I was intending, but just might considered be kind of, a gift. Yeah, there, an yeah exactly. Right? It's an opportunity. Exactly. So it's kind of fun. I love serendipity. So I just flipped a magazine open and the first words I looked at were ups and downs. And I just thought, <laughs> works. I'll take that. I'm going to post the link for the Barry Art Club. If you can please let me know in the chat if you see it in a minute. 
Yeah, allowing for the lag. You're putting in. I'm putting in triple dots in place of the single dots, okay, but I don't know it. if it's enough. Right. Well, so we'll find we'll, out. We'll find out. Yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. So I've clicked, but there may be a lag. So There's just give it lag, half yeah. a minute or a minute. And and we've got Judy. Oh, we've got a backup here. <laughs> uh, got a backlog. Debbie said the sound is fine. A bit of static from time to time. Oh, all right. Okay. Thank you for the heads up. I'm not sure why that would be, but it could even be internet. Like yeah, it, it could, could be, be it could depending be. on her yeah. her internet service. But that's good to know. Gerda asks, "What is the theme today again?" Please. Uh the theme is flights of fancy, Gerda, and. As always, it's optional. So if that doesn't float your boat, feel feel free. <laughs> so to, to speak. <laughs> Mixing metaphors. Yeah, like crazy I am. Here. I am. Yeah, sorry. Terrible. Don't fly your kite. If that doesn't uh, <laughs> if that doesn't fly your kite, then feel free to uh, pick a go on go off piece, as it were. Yeah. Uh, Debbie, yes, there is a traditional class this Wednesday at two. That's good to know. For those of you who are traditionally inclined. And Mira has joined hey, us. Hey, Mira. Good to have the, the collagers aboard. Yeah. Mira, you posted a beauty of a collage under the, the under the skin or whatever. Whatever oh, yeah, that beneath yeah, the surface, yeah, yeah. whatever, whatever that theme was. Judy Nugent says hi and hey, is Judy. joining for a bit today from the north. They had trouble with their internet, but seems okay today. Oh, good. Yay. So that's good. How far north, Judy? Cottage country, I presume? Whereabouts? In general terms. Yeah, you know, right. we, don't, we don't need GPS <laughs> we, we don't have to. Yeah, yeah, we don't want to uh, uh, get too... Uh, this is a public chat, so yeah, exactly. bear that in mind. Yeah. Okay, I'm assuming no one sees the link because right. I haven't received any. Yeah, did, can anyone see the link that Kim posted to the Berry Art Club? If not, she'll try again with uh, with more <laughs> more alterations. More alterations, exactly. Near Port Carling, Judy said. Ah, yes, Lake of Bays. That's where your cousin is, right? That's right, yeah. yeah. I seem to recall the roads are extremely confusing around there. <laughs> and he confirms there's no link. All okay, right, let's thank you, try Amy. That Thanks again. for that. We'll try again. Okay, art Club. I'll just put it in slash... Let's see if this will work. Mira asks, is it the controlled chaos you were talking about? Uh, no, it's no. something about beneath the surface, what you see underneath something, uh, Mira. It looks like someone's looking through a hole to Oh, Things right. Yeah, the sort of sci-fi-ish ones. Yeah. yeah, they were great. Yeah. Um, and he says, with COVID, all our travel plans are now flights of fancy, but I need to go <laughs> right. to my happy place. Yes, yeah, exactly. Happy place is good. I saw this image just here as I was leafing through, and it reminded me of your collage, Annie, with the, uh, the, the uh, sort of northern lights in the sky there and the cool colors. <laughs> And in fact, it's an ad for Yukon School of Visual Arts, so it makes sense, right? That's a so Ricky Annie tells me that the link net is now showing up. Just bear in mind that where where there was a slash, I've put slash in brackets. Where there was a hyphen, I've put the word hyphen in brackets. Okay, right. So 
and triple dots actually mean single dots. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's very awkward, but that's just the way it is with uh, the YouTube chat. Um, and that can be something we could research to see if there's a way around it. But for now, this is the way around it. Yeah. We don't share a lot of links, so hopefully when it's rare, it's all right. Um, Judy <coughs> says, actually, Lake Rosso. Ah, okay. Well, right, right. Yeah, isn't beautiful. It? Yeah. I haven't been there for a long time, but I... Nice memories. Mira says, there is one I posted a few hours ago. I bet that's it, Mira, because I was checking this morning, right, late morning. Right. And uh, it was top of my news feed or close to it. I'm just going to cut this one out for Kim because I know she'll love it. And just pass it right over to her. Oh, is it trees or something? There you go, Kim. Lovely. Oh, Ben Reeves. Exactly. Oh, He's one of my favorite painters. One of our favorite painters is a guy named uh, Ben Reeves, and he's he's he teaches West at Coast, the Emily yeah, Carr. Yeah, teaches at Emily Carr, and, and he is the nicest man, sweetest guy. Like he um, he's always very positive. Like we sometimes comment on each other's work on Instagram, and he's uh, he's lovely. Yeah. So, yeah. Next time we head out west, we're going to uh, yeah, we have a bunch of people we arrange need to, see. to meet them in person. Let's see. He's now carried by Nicholas Mativier Gallery on King Street in Toronto. Oh, that's nice. And um, you know, of course, COVID hit. He yeah, was having right. his first show here this oh, summer no, or really? something, oh. or maybe it was this spring. And anyway, he told me that he couldn't make the opening for this year, but that next year's show, I think it's next year's, he would right. travel here. So if we don't see him going that way, maybe yeah, we'll catch him coming this way. We might see him yeah. here. And he says, yes, love the Northern Lights. Yeah. There have been a lot. The Northern Lights have apparently been really active this Recently. summer. Oh, okay. Um, it was Grand Bend, Ontario. I saw this photograph from that had fantastic North Lights activity and the comet. Wow. Yeah. The Neo. I mean, and Grand whatever Bend's it's not far north. No, it's like, exactly. It's similar latitude to us, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, Toronto. Yeah. It, it's happened that Toronto has. I have seen lights. them in Toronto when I was younger, not in a it's long rare, time, though. though. Yeah like 40 years ago <laughs> so my godmother i remember saw them in winnipeg sometimes not very often but sometimes it seems well and we're not um out as much but when i was growing up cottaging in the halliburton highlands um it was not unusual to see them i would see them maybe once a year, once or twice a year but uh, i haven't seen them in but, a long time well also like it's like as soon as I started going to the cottage with you, there were no more otters and there were no more northern lights. <laughs> and we did finally see northern lights. Like, the, was it like the second last year of your family having right, the cottage right. yeah. or something? Yeah. Like, yeah, it was. Yeah, I'll ne the, I'll never forget. Um, my family took a holiday to um, New Brunswick, and we sort of my parents rented a cottage. Um, in Shediac, New Brunswick, but then we would do, take two or three day trips, lots of other places. But one day, I remember my father waking me up at like three in the morning. He had got out. He was always he was he would wake up and have a smoke and sit and sit outside or whatever, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so he woke everyone up because the Northern Lights were. I have never seen them. They were actually not very colorful, all white. But 360 degrees around, and it was like being inside a mountain because wow. they all came up to a point sort of central, not quite a point, but sort of it's like you were at the edge. epicenter. Yeah, exactly. And it was like being inside a cone. And I've always seen them sort of more or less near the horizon, shimmering bands yeah. and different colors, um, but I never seen them all the way around. 
and 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 tall, like from just above the horizon to just below this sort of central point. Amazing. Yeah. So, and that's not very hugely far north either. I mean, it's probably not much farther north than here. Yeah. Joy says uh, the comet was fantastic out where she is. Ooh. Salt Spring, and she saw it from her deck. Nice. Wow. That's so great. Val says we see otters a lot, but oh, no good. northern lights. Yeah, I think they say that otters. Um, Val, are you? Um, oh, but you're on a river, right? So that's good. Yeah, they they would like a river, I would imagine. Yeah. Um, Sherry says we used to see the northern lights in Dorset years ago, twenty or so years mm -hmm, ago. Mm -hmm, yeah, so Dorset's yeah. not far from where my cottage was family cottage so joy says and now meteors are whizzing by at night and you can see the space station almost nightly wow wow you have a fit you obviously have a great night sky yes. joy where yeah. you are that's fantastic we we look forward to visiting your night sky <laughs> <laughs> when, when travel can resume <laughs> i i there are so many lovely things about living in an urban area. Um, a few fewer now, now that COVID, but, yeah. um, but one of the major downsides is the lack of night sky. I yeah. mean, it's, it just goes to like a lighter, uh, a darker gray than. <laughs> Sometimes it looks peach colored. It's really. Well, yeah, weird. you get all the reflected light and it's that looks gorgeous, by the way. It looks like a watercolor and it's clouds. Am I right? Yeah, it's clouds. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Hold it up and show people. Yeah, so this is um, a black and white photograph. Um, the printed green. The printed green, yep, exactly, <laughs> For because I forgot to make it black and white, and I don't know why it's that green, it's, but it's kind of, it's, again, it's a gift, right? So it's like, yeah. okay, I can work with that. Yeah. It's going to animate, um, animate the piece to some extent, having these black and white images and sort of green duotones is essentially what they seem to be. Yeah. How they come across. Very much. Yeah. It's probably because uh, the print head needs cleaning on the color. Right. The colors. Lillian says hi from Winnipeg. Hey, hi Lillian. Lillian. Need to see those Northern lights while here in Winnipeg. Yes. yes. You need some compensations for being uh, in such a, I mean, you got to go through some pretty Winter, intense that, winters yeah. there. So <laughs> yes, you should exactly. be rewarded. Any comments? Wow, three hundred and sixty degree yeah, northern it was lights. Unbelievable. On my bucket list, along with polar bears in their native habitat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah do that sooner rather than later. Once COVID's over. Yeah. Because. Because. Uh, Things that don't, yeah, things don't look great for them. Debbie says, when I was kayaking last week, I got to witness a loon family with two chicks being fed fish by their parents. Wow. So beautiful yeah. to witness. What a treat. Yeah, what that is a treat. That's fabulous. The, probably, if not at the very top of my list, is for evocative sounds that put me where in a beautiful place from childhood is is the sound of loons yeah it's just Instantly. so yeah it's it transports me and i think their their call transports you in time it's like yeah, you're no it, longer a modern human listening no to exactly there's something um primeval or Scary. um or um uh, yeah ancient yeah, yeah primeval yeah. Uh, Adele was having trouble saying hi, and she figured it out. She's glad to say. Oh, good. Hi, Adele. And, uh, <laughs> she said, I was on last week's episode, so, <laughs> so she couldn't figure out why she couldn't get on this one. But anyway, you're here, so welcome, yes. Adele. You, when we were just getting started, Adele, we talked about um, what you missed. Um, the fact that you sometimes just have to keep hitting refresh on the browser, it, Something. It may not be that she couldn't get the live feed. Oh, right. You couldn't, like, couldn't, chat. couldn't chat. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, sorry. Of course. Yeah. You, you said you couldn't say hi, not that you couldn't uh, 
be watching. Sorry. Joy is noticing green clouds out, presumably out her window. Uh -oh. Maybe, maybe there may be a thunderstorm ahead. Yeah, they say uh, greenish tinge is also like tornado, but I I'm not sure you're prone to tornadoes out there. But um, yes, it definitely is a harbinger of uh, something to be definitely severe keep an weather. eye out on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Maybe it'll miss you. Keep us posted, Joy. <laughs> um, Mira writes, you are so poetic, my mind flies. <laughs> Lillian writes, winter in Winnipeg is from October to March. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it starts early there. Um, Lillian, do you know the uh, the song by the, the Weaker Thans? Do you know... Um, I hate Winnipeg. I think it's actually not called I hate Winnipeg. That's the chorus. It's called one great town or one great city. It's it's hilarious. It's very and witty very, and and yeah, like it's beautiful, really well written. Um, so definitely, and I'm sure you can find it on YouTube. Yeah. Definitely worth. Uh, and they're from Winnipeg, yeah. right? The band. You probably yeah. You probably know about the the weaker than being a Winnipegger, Winnipegonian. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think she, she moved there like, right, in right. recent years. Okay, so right. She's... Yeah, no, but she, well, she's probably there now. Oh, yeah, she's there now. What I mean is, like, she's oh, probably now call herself a, a whatever they are. Well, what are they, Lillian? What are native, what are Winnipeg dwellers? <laughs> Debbie writes The sound is awesome and eerie, but magnificent, especially when yeah. it echoes across the lake. Yes. Yeah. And when they answer each other, like call, call and response, that's so fantastic. Uh, Joy writes, like the hoot of an owl at night echoing through the trees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Adele says she was unable to get the live feed. Okay. So, yeah, I uh, it took me three or four minutes, Adele, too. And, and I'm, you know, right next to him. So it's uh, a question of the potentially the internet traffic and you have to keep hitting refresh in your browser until it shows up. So hopefully you figured that out. And uh, one, one other thing that, um, that I've found works for me when I'm doing the commentary for Kim's virtual studio party is we both have a playlist for those. And so on our channel, you can go to playlist. And so, and you'll see, that's how I found your link faster than on just the basic page. So mm. it might be worth trying. Like, just look at look under playlist, and you'll see the Live Now link sometimes there oh, faster. Because you put it in the playlist right from the get-go? Is that because I, I don't understand how it could be in the playlist? I don't know you either. put it there. Yeah. And I don't until afterwards, so. Yeah. So not... I'm not a hundred percent. No, sure not about playlist that. videos. Yeah. Videos. Videos, that's it. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Bear with us, guys. Especially me. <laughs> oh dear. Look under videos. Try looking under <laughs> videos. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, I should collage and not uh, not try and solve well, technical problems. By all problems. means uh, get collaging. Yeah, no, but I mean Joy says, I was thinking of your green clouds, Cal. Oh, right, yeah. right. Yes, yes. Ooh, wow. That looks amazing. What you've just done right there. Yeah. Always exciting watching Cal at work, as far as I'm concerned. You are silly. I'll just mention this, because sometimes we forget that... Uh, um, if you don't mind giving the video a like, uh, if you enjoy this today, before you go, just please click on the like button or you can click now if you're near your computer. Um, much appreciated. And if you're not subscribed already, uh, you could consider subscribing and then you'll find out about videos. So Adele asks, so theme is flight of fancy? Flight, flight, flight or flights. Yes, of fancy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I looked it up and it's, it, it, it's more about um, highly imp improbable or 
um, fanciful rather than um, not fanciful. What was the other word? See, I should have printed it out. Yeah. Um, anyway. Fantasy. Daydream. Yeah. It's sort of a, a synonymous with pipe dream or... Castles in the sky. Yeah, castles in the sky, all of that stuff. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with the uh, pictures. <laughs> I, I seem to be getting myself into more trouble. Well, you were quite eloquent talking about the Northern Lights, my dear. Well, that wasn't trying to remember something I had just read. <laughs> That's probably the difference. It was experiential. Yeah. No, I guess I'll go answer the door. I had a busy doorbell the last uh, hour or two. Got a delivery not very long ago and now another one, apparently. Oh, it's Joe. Oh. Our, uh, our steps needed a little bit of uh, looking at out front our railing that we had done last okay. last year and so I sent the guy a couple of pictures and of course he's chosen during our collage jam to yeah. <laughs> to uh, to drop by and so so it's a classic you know <laughs> everything uh, So, I thought maybe this would, uh, I don't even know why I'm doing this way down here, but it seems like the thing. Too many rectangles, though. I think I need to... I kind of like the, this sort of really dramatic sky and then this sort of spindly plane with the two guys. I, in fact, this is a, one of their gliders. The, um, so, but it's too many rectangles. So the next thing is to see what I can do about that. I might uh, interfere with it a little bit. And I can see that some of you guys are commenting our, our, uh, our um, comment reader will be back shortly. Thought maybe. Oh, well, that's kind of a fun idea. Try this. Great. Thanks so much, Joe. Too, too zigzaggy, but. I know it's like mountains more than clouds, but I have this idea of like tearing a strip of paper into sort of a cloud type profile and maybe just interfering a little bit with the images that way. I'm back. I'm back. She, she's back. I've seen comments coming in, so. Yeah. But they're I'm too small for to, my middle-aged eyes, so. I'm going to have to catch up here. Joy says, love the colors, Cal. Yeah, and just, like, completely by accident, right? Which, sometimes that's the best way. Yeah. Sherry writes, I googled the term and the Mongolian wor word temul came up, T-E-M-U-L, a sense of creativity and passion, to have creative thoughts and even to take a flight of fancy. What a wonderful <laughs> wow. word, Sherry. Thank you for finding yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that's way better than whatever I found, which was the Wiktionary uh, 
explanation of what a flight of fancy was. It we do have a brewer's phrase, phrase and fable. And fable. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I should look it up That's there. That's actually a good, uh, yeah. good thing to do right I, there. I'll do that. I'll just copy Sherry's comment there because I love I love words that are mm -hmm. wonderfully descriptive and evocative. Kim's off on a on a mission to to find our brewer's oh, phrase I and won't, fable. Uh, push it too much because no. I can lay my hands on it easily. You know. Oh, actually, I think it might be in your studio. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Try the center, the far side center top. That's where the dictionary is and thesaurus, so it might be there. <laughs> I should know it's my studio, but I don't. <laughs> I've got a picture of the Wright brothers sitting in their plane. Now, maybe it's a promo shot, but they have like their ties and shirts and jackets on. <laughs> Probably flying that way. I don't know. Isn't that hilarious? Hopefully they, they wore something a little more comfortable for the actual... Your parents obviously really enjoyed this book. Look at this. Yeah, it's well worn. <laughs> yeah. And I thought it was a different color, too. So there you go. There you go. I would have been looking for the wrong color. Let's see if I missed any chat. I'm sure Not you have. Not yet. Not yet? Oh. Everybody's working busy, away. Busy collaging. That's Just right. as it should be. Right, guys? <laughs> Liberty gibbet. <laughs> well, I don't know why, but I don't see Flight of Fancy. That's, That's kind so of surprising, weird. isn't it? Yeah. It's not a, uh, an esoteric phrase. It's a well-known or at least I think it is a well-known phrase. But. Maybe it's not esoteric enough. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. That could be it. I'll go to the index and see if I can... No, it's not there. Oh, well. Good thing we have the internet. Yep. I mean, this book has over 1,200 pages. <laughs> Well, yes for flibber de gibbet, and no for uh, flights of fancy. Thanks for all the likes on the videos, everybody. That's lovely. On the video, I should say. Ah. Uh. There are so many butterflies this summer. It's wonderful. It is wonderful. We had the strange and unusual experience of going to an art exhibition yesterday afternoon in Oakville. A whole lot of old friends, longtime students, 
former students and acquaintances are having a group show uh, called Figuratively Speaking. And they're part of a group that meets once a week pre-COVID uh, right. through the year. They take the summer off. I used to be part of it many years ago. And um, it's a great drawing group and wonderful. Break time was always awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just so full of talent and so on. So it's all figure art, but some of it's quite unexpected. There's drawing and painting, sculpture, and digital artwork as well. So um, And some collage, too. So. Some collage. Yeah. So... Yeah, it's very interesting. And wow, what a such a treat to actually be at an actual show in person. We and talk to other and, human yeah, beings. I don't, you know, we've done so little of that <laughs> yeah. of late. It was quite a treat. Ah, Annie's got a report on her her little monarch uh, race. Oh yes, how 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 go how are the? So she says she's got six chrysalises. Wow. And two more caterpillars getting ready to change. Wow. That's so. You're great. very good at it, Annie. That's amazing. Our friend Loretta, um, uh, just had one of her chrysalises turn into a butterfly, and she. Gave us, uh, there were reports on Facebook very frequently. She'd done the research and you're supposed to give them six hours to sort of get their wings in good shape before releasing them. So uh, anyway, so got to see the whole thing from when the chrysalis first showed, first showed signs that the butterfly was going to start coming out to the release. Yeah, that's so great. Neat. So, when they have to sort of um, unfurl them and let them sort of yeah, they got to uh, have to get the circulation going yeah, in them, yeah, I exactly. think, and, and then they get actually strong, structurally stronger too. And he says, "Yes, their wings need to dry and be stronger. I can hardly wait." Yeah, me too, Annie. I'm I'm loving watching vicariously. It's just such a, it's hard to believe that that happens, isn't it? Like, yeah, it, what a it's crazy so process. so improbable, you know? Like, if you told, you know how um, you, you hear all these stories about what people used to believe when they were, you know, in the past, like, that, I don't know, you name it, like, all these myths that, and people thought that, the, you know, rain fell from, fell from the ground or came up from the ground yeah or snow that's right. actually snow, snow came it was from snow. the ground yeah and all these things that like we laugh at now and if if you if we didn't have the scientific proof it'd be like yeah right butterflies from from caterpillars sure <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah nature is awesome yeah, Annie. yeah and you're getting such a fantastic up close view We just have our habitat that other people call our backyard. <laughs> All the little critters and bugs love it. Joy says, we have hummingbirds whizzing by and dive bombing you if you don't fill the feeder. That's <laughs> fabulous. Yep. <laughs> Come on, we're hungry. <laughs> we're right. doing a lot of flying. <laughs> That's right. You're not doing your job. <laughs> That's like having a cat. <laughs> Ooh, neato. And he says that would be fun to watch. Yeah. That would. My grandparents, when they retired, they retired, they lived in Montreal and they retired to the Laurentians. And at one point, they were able, maybe after they gave up the apartment in Montreal, they um, built a sunroom onto the back 
of their house in the mountains. Just a just a an old a small old house that actually my grandmother's father had built it was originally a log cabin, but much improved since then. Anyway, this sunroom was spectacular. It was the the one truly modern part of the house, and it was spacious and it had windows, big windows. And at the base of the the one of the big windows, the window they used to sit and have their morning coffee at every day, um, my grandmother had planted all kinds of things like daylilies and tiger lilies and so on and so forth. And so it was just spectacular with hummingbirds. And uh, that was the prime hummingbird watching area. Hummingbirds are another one of those highly improbable, unbelievable <laughs> critters. Things. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. What are the Laurentians in the United States? Do they become the Adirondacks? I think so. Yeah. So I, I think it might be a separate range of mountains, but it's oh, part of the I thought it was Oh, contiguous? Uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe it is. Well, well I should remember borders my... on Vermont, right? So like Vermont is you cross over from Vermont and you're Right. That's where the it's not where the Champlain Bridge. Bridges. Yeah. 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 And he asked, didn't they base the helicopter on hummingbird flight? Oh, maybe. Well, it makes sense. That yeah. At, at the very least, it gave them the idea that, you know, let's get something that can fly that way. But, although they use a propeller instead of yeah, but the, sort the amazing of speed, wings. Uh, speed of hover to hover. Yeah. And the nimbleness, right? Yeah, like yeah. they can turn on a dime. Yeah. yeah. They can turn on a subway token <laughs> or mind a dime. Not one of those clunky dimes. Yeah. So I have the feeling that I asked earlier what you guys were thinking of for your collages but did they did they say no nope. okay i they're just they're they're probably busy thinking what it was going to be but maybe now you're for, a little further along let, let me know so if you when have you any... get a chance if you can put in the chat what yeah you're i know you may be what you're working on what you may you're be thinking. busy gluing yeah right? yeah and that fair enough yeah so that's why i say when you get a chance I love their bowler hats. That's great. Yeah. Joy says they are on their own flights of fantasy. Of fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> of fancy. Yeah. They are. Very fancy flyers indeed. <laughs> oh, that looks neat, eh? The green in front of the yeah. grayscale. I was thinking that what I might do. Ooh, and a bit of map. Gotta love a bit of map. Gotta love some nice map. Map, 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 map. Nice. No, it's not the knife that I want. It's the straight thing that I want. AKA ruler. And When I was younger, I thought you couldn't put things, disparate things together. So if I was collaging something about the Wright brothers at Kitty Hawk, the map would have to be Kitty Hawk and so on. And I'm going to try to just uh, break out of that just for the heck of it. <laughs> what are you going to put instead? Well, I'm going to put the map that I've got, which is better random than... Random map. Random map, exactly. In fact, I'm not... I'm barely using any of the map. I'm using some of the peripheral. Oh, really? The peripheral oh, you're just going to have a sliver. At least this is the plan, right? 
Subject to change without notice, yeah. no guarantees written or implied. That's an artist's prerogative. Yep. Oh, is this that lovely gouache stuff? That is that lovely gouache stuff, Kim. Wow. He's been coveting my gouache. Yeah. Anybody else ever experience art material lust? <laughs> no, artists <laughs> never have that. <laughs> No one I definitely ever, have no. some for these little Liquitex acrylic gouache. Val says she's finished hers. She used <laughs> You're so fast, Val. I'm impressed. <laughs> balloons, birds, and a cat. That's great. I love that. <laughs> Balloons are the perfect thing for flights of fancy, aren't they? Yeah. They're 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 sort of slow and and silly looking and whimsical and and uncontrollable. Um, uncontrollable, <laughs> exactly. And there's um, I didn't give myself enough time to do go looking, but I was thinking anything sort of eighteen. Um, 19th century sort of steampunky would be very good for flights of fancy and sort of balloons and bathyscaps and and uh, su such like dirigibles. That's the word. That's what zeppelins are. <clears throat> I don't know whether they they were more a 20th century thing. I think, but. comes a point where you just have to glue some something down and then take your chances. And that's what I'm going to do. Commitment. Commitment. Yep. And I want to play this here somewhere-ish. So is this enough space? More or less. Just some of that. Okay. Good. Go for it. Practically like watching Mission Impossible. <laughs> yeah, except for the excitement part. <laughs> Art stuff is exciting. Annie writes, she's doing some brainstorming and homework. I think I have have her art classes and she thinks she has her art classes and jams per week limit. <laughs> right, well, yes. You're taking it quite a bit, right? Yeah. Bless doing you. Two jams in two classes. So Yeah. Really appreciate having you in our classes. Sherry writes, she's created a collage with a hand spreading Venetian blinds. She's embedded it between sheets of plastic so she can slide her photos of the places she misses during during COVID, COVID right? Her personal flights of fancy. Right. Lovely, That's, Sherry. Yeah. I like that idea a lot. Sherry's good with the concepts. And the and things that she can change around. Yes. Keeping <laughs> keeping the uh, flexibility, right? Yeah. You may be able to see to the left of, from your perspective, to the left of Cal's head, I have all kinds of things hanging from the whiteboard. Yeah. So um, there, there are all these different layers and I'm playing with their arrangement and sequence and relationship. And that state of flux is a very exciting place to be and a creative place to be. So Lillian has replied to your Winnipeg. Ah, uh, yes. Officially Winnipeggers, but often okay. called Winnipegonians or Peggers. I've definitely heard Peggers. <laughs> I hate Winnipeg lyrics and song. Yep. How about Prairie Town, Portage and Maine by Neil Young and Randy Bachman? Ooh, I didn't know they did work together. That's fun. That's cool. Yeah, well, definitely write that one down. We'll have to look that up. Okay, I'll copy that. Sherry says she's a Gemini, right? So you, <laughs> you, you've always got this push and pull. 
I, my zodiac doesn't cover this, but I must be multiple. Uh... <laughs> yeah, you're the whole, the whole thing. <laughs> Lillian tried to enter a file, but yeah, I'm afraid that's not um, possible on the YouTube chat. Yeah, they don't let you post uh, links or files, just in because. Unfortunately, there are people who what they would post randomly, they'll just go in and uh, insert themselves into public chats and insert pornographic images or, you know, advertising for their Bitcoin business or. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it just it, it, it can be quite, quite wild west uh, on YouTube, not in our little space, I'm glad to say. No. But but uh yeah so that's why we have these limitations hey ruth yay Hi, better ruth. late than never <laughs> pornographic images what is going on here <laughs> lol you missed them ruth yeah too late yeah you'll have I'm to sorry. watch the replay <laughs> <laughs> oh dear gunta has also just joined hey, gunta. us excellent yeah it is better late than never it's lovely that you're able to join us. Uh, just in from leading a fitness class in my pool for neighbors. Oh, nice to good move for you. again. Yeah. That sounds great. I'd love to do that. Yeah. Aquafit. Good she for wants you. to know what she's missed. Well, you can certainly scroll back. Oh, can you scroll back through the chat? I don't I think know. I, I don't know whether. You will be able to on the replay, but I don't yeah. know. Um, she's a Gemini as well. So does that mean that you, you have trouble... Uh, nailing down the final form of something, Gunta. That's what we were talking about with Sherry. Or maybe you enjoy the fact that you can you can move between options. And uh, Gunta says, "Congrats on having your own channel, Cal." <laughs> Why? That's thank nice. you. <laughs> Ruth is laughing. And Ruth says, yes, you can scroll back. Awesome. Yeah, That's thank great. you. We thought you could, but. Ruth says she's a Pisces. Well, Ruth, which she says is all over the place. Well, join the club. Both of us are Pisces, Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> Lillian says, yes, you can scroll up to the top of the chat while live. Excellent. Yeah. Gunta says, oh, I have trouble nailing down anything. Yeah. And Ruth says, wow, then how come I can't paint, paint like you, LOL? <laughs> <laughs> no, you paint like you, Ruth. Yeah, you paint that's like better. the person you need to paint like. Yeah, that's better. Val says she's a Gemini too. She thinks it means that they have a million ideas, can't decide which one to do first. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have a bit of Gemini in you then, Kim. <laughs> well, actually, well, yeah, a little bit. You have, a, you definitely have a million ideas. Well, the problem is when you have a load of ideas, you have to choose something yeah. because you can't do all of them at once. Yeah. yeah. And Val, that reminds me of back in in uh, in Halliburton in when you were doing the spa program, and I think our first meeting in in your studio, and uh, that that rings a bell because I think I, I think at that point you didn't you were feeling that keenly. Joy says I'm a Gemini as well. Wow, it's like chock a block with Gemini's <laughs> in here. Yep. Uh, there must be something wonderful about a Gemini Pisces mix. Um, challenging sometimes is you have to think of two of everything. <laughs> <laughs> have to satisfy both both halves of yourself, eh? 
Gunta says being a Gemini and a senior is also called dementia. <laughs> 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 or can be confused with it. the pad that's why i can't yeah. take the page all right so you're getting some atmospheric stuff from the outside magazine yeah well i got this image this sky image yeah. there's a an article i've stolen quite a few uh bits from i think it's about <laughs> it's about war in the high mountains in Kashmir and so on but oh, it's wow. got very dramatic uh Guys. Skies and scenes. So great elements then. Yeah. Is it wrong that I want to have a nap? A nap. <laughs> well, it's, it's three o'clock. Yeah, right? no, it it's, is. That's it like is, the, it is, it the is. nap. Hour or it something. is the napping hour. I it's true. Ruth says, time for chocolate. <laughs> yes. Good you idea. so right. Yeah. Lillian says, much better than an apple. <laughs> Ruth also likes the colors in your collage. So, Oh, thanks, Ruth. One of the things that happened, Ruth, that you would have missed is that um, some of the grayscale photographs that Cal printed, he forgot to specify grayscale in the print window when he sent it to print. And so it uses color cartridges. And because our color cartridges are obviously out of balance at the moment, uh, printhead cleaning wise, uh, it printed them like green and black duotone. So, so the color is serendipitous little gift from our printer. Yeah, and it's, it was a surprise, but it's fine. So yeah, well, it's making, yeah, nice making for an interesting Yes, a happy accident. Yeah, You're so exactly, right, Ruth. Exactly. I thought, okay, I need a piece of tape just to uh, make sure I put them in the right place. And then I thought, oh, green. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is what happens to me. Yeah. I'm like it. Um, well, easily distracted or easily. I don't even know what. All right. We don't have to diagnose it fully. No, today. let's let's not, because it'll be tedious. Yeah, that's I have right. to say. <laughs> Much more interesting what you're doing. With yeah, exactly. Ooh, that side's kind of fun too. We actually have a lot of green things. I'm looking around. Green bin down here. Green pencil case. Yeah. Green mug. <laughs> So 
So I know a bunch of you guys, and I think it just runs with collagers to a certain extent, um, like to reuse your scraps and thing and so on. So next week's theme is one person's trash dot dot dot. And uh, so I'm giving you a heads up now. I don't usually know the next theme this far ahead. But you but do this time. Since it is about, since it suits using scraps and so on, I figured it'd be good to give you a heads up. And of course, it doesn't have to be scraps, right? We can, you can, trash can be How interpreted in many different ways. Going, how's Valerie going to manage to deal with that theme? Cal? No, like, Val, Val just, you might have to sit it out. Yeah, it's just um, going to be too hard for her. Yeah. You know, maybe, maybe when we get to the shiny new baubles uh, <laughs> theme, it'll suit you better, I know. Oh, dear. <laughs> Philippa says hi. Hey, Philippa. She says she's Welcome been here back. all along but couldn't chat because Engo was using the computer, so she was uh, watching on the TV. Know. I don't know, Engo. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you were able yeah. to say hi uh, even, this, even this far in. Yeah. Ruth says, oh, wow, I could make a thousand collages on that theme. <laughs> Smile. Philippa, do you want to, since you've managed to hop on the computer, do you want to share with us what you're up to? Are you yeah, making what are you collage? collaging? Are you collaging or painting or are you working on a figurative piece or? Val writes, love my trash. <laughs> you do more than most. I should uh, not I sh more than Rosemary. But... No, no, yeah, I was. I was just going <laughs> to say we should. I should make a special point to invite Rosemary yeah, <laughs> next that's week. Right. Uh oh. Uh -uh. Ricky has a hot tip. She found an Elmer's glue stick that is repositionable. Ah, yes, I've seen a those. Lifesaver for novices, not just novices no. either, Ricky. So yeah, that's brilliant. Perhaps others already know about it, but I just found it and wanted to share. No, thank you, Ricky. That's great. I, I have known about that and forgotten about them, that you can yeah. buy those. We should buy some and test them out. See what we think. Oh, that's looking interesting. You know, um, I was thinking, I, I have... <coughs> considered the repositionable glue sticks in the past and thought, well, I glue things down and I'm usually like, like it or not, I just go with it. So I've sort of put it out of my mind, but, um, a lot of people would benefit from, Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because that's one of the things about collage is that you can move stuff around if you can. Right. <laughs> um, but another thing that I do, which I haven't done in a long time is um, use an airbrush and I cut stencils, my own I, like cut out shapes that I um, need a repositionable glue. And I have a spray glue that's repositionable, but a glue stick would be perfect. Right. So um, cut out a shape, use the repositionable glue stick on it, put it, stick it down temporarily, spray yeah. around it and then peel it off that, so thank you. I'd forgotten about. You'd have to test. Yeah, it to see no, if it left residue yeah, or whatever. But. Yeah, exactly. But definitely worth the try. So thank you, Ricky. Joy would like to know what Cal is doing now. All right. Well, I, maybe you'd it, like to. Yeah, hold I'm, up I'm the, about to hold it up. So thank you for now asking. Now that it's Joy. glued, you can. Yeah. Um, work in progress, but it's. Um, I've got a picture of one of the Wright brothers gliders before they put engines in a little bit of a ministry of natural resources map edge, a bit of sky. Can you bring it even closer yeah. and crop yourself out? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Just so people can see more detail. There we go. And who knows? I don't know. That's as far as it's got so far. I got some residue on one of their faces. Perfect. Oh, well. That's what can happen. Yep. I might distress it a little more with paint or something else just to further mess with it. 
Philippa says, I've been cutting up a Kleenex box to collage onto my latest painting. Oh, yes. Some of the Kleenex boxes have amazingly beautiful uh, designs on them. The box was full, but I added the tissues to another box so I could do this. <laughs> oh, I've totally been there, Philippa. Yeah. Because uh, I, think, I think um, making image transfers from Kleenex boxes is fantastic because, because the designs can be so wonderful. So Sherry asks, doesn't the repositionable glue stick leave a residue? So maybe you can answer that, Ricky. If it does, then it'll be a question of what's more important to you. As, as Ricky says, for novices in particular, um, repositionable would be quite important. But um, it's good to, good to know if it does. Debbie says, I totally relate to nap time. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, Gerda writes, a pile of fabrics and scraps included bits and pieces from dresses my mom sewed for me wow. when I was a kid until my 20s. Wow. That's great. The grandkids love them for collage. There's probably some wonderful vintage designs in those fabrics yeah. too, right? Ricky writes that the repositionable glue stick dries clear, but Ricky, in terms of residue, so if you if you if you stick, if you a, stick piece it down, down, it a piece down and, and then, then you, you lift, lift it, it up again, does it leave some glue does behind it? on the underlayer that you stuck it down to temporarily? That's that would be the uh, the question of the moment. That would be the sticking point. <laughs> There, that was that was such an apropos pun. I'm I'm almost shocked. Really, <laughs> was it forced? So, what are you searching for? Or do you know? So, right now, I'm searching for. I guess words. Although I'm open to other things. Just to, I have this one little bit that says ups and downs, which seems appropriate for the early days of flight. And I was just looking for, to see if I can find, sometimes words out of context are, but a perfect can, can, can hit you. So yeah, sometimes true. they don't, <laughs> sometimes you look in vain, but yeah. Um, I thought I would look and just see if anything anything showed up. Philippa writes, years ago, I used to make fabric banners. One Ooh. day I grabbed a perfectly good tablecloth and cut it up because the design was just right for what I was doing, smile. That's, That's an artist yeah. for you. Yeah. That's what an artist does. <laughs> We've we've definitely done our versions of that yeah. more than a few times because you just look at it and you think, yeah, but that's my whatever. And then you think, yeah, but it's perfect for this piece of art. So exactly. the art wins, right? Yeah, the art <laughs> wins. Philippa adds, by the way, I like your cute little ponytail. <laughs> <laughs> it's of necessity. Yeah. Um, in the 90s, I used to wear a ponytail. It was a long ponytail. Yeah, with and it had ringlets. more hair in it too, and uh, it, was it wasn't thicker. sort of stretched across <laughs> a a, uh, a bald patch the way it is now. Um, but which no one else could see, of course. So you just it's just the way it is. But he had ringlets in his ponytail when he was young, when it was long enough to have ringlets. It was quite charming, if I do say Fortun so. Fortunately, she thought so. I did. <laughs> he will eventually get a new haircut by yours truly. We just 
time and energy have not coincided in a way that's allowed that to happen. No, usually Kim cuts my hair every several months. And every once in a while, she can con convince me to attempt cutting her hair. So finally, for a change, it's, it's usually Cal who gets the haircut and Kim who doesn't. So it, fortunately, it's the, I've been the other way around this time. <laughs> yeah. Philippa says she's trying to grow her hair as she's sick and tired of wearing her, her hair short. If you've had it a long time and you're a little bit of a novelty junkie, then yeah, you have to change it up, right? Yeah. Yeah. I got so sick of how long my hair was. I was desperate for a cut. So bless Cal. It needs a tune up now, but. It needed, it needed a tune up as soon as I was done with it, but she's being very <laughs> diplomatic. You did famously. Ricky has obviously gone and, and done some research, uh, hands-on research, and she says, <laughs> no, no residue is left behind, but I just use a dab to check things out before I actually do the permanent glue. Right, right. Yeah, so you're not covering the whole surface in glue, which is very wise. Lillian says, COVID hair. Totally, yep. Lillian. <laughs> yep. Philippa said, you did a super job of cutting Kim's hair. There, see? You you couldn't see the back, Philippa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Yes, thank you, Ricky. I echo Sherry's message. And we'll definitely pick up pick up a couple of sticks of that to try out. Philippa says she cut Engo's hair and it turned out quite well. She just oh, watched well a done. hair cutting video first. Yeah. Good That's for what you. Cal did too. He watched a video. My my haircut, of course, the one that I like. My signature haircut is a little more elaborate than um, than would have been ideal for Cal, but bless him, he he worked hard at it, and uh, I was so happy. Well, and you do very you do asymmetrical cut. She does asymmetrical cuts for me, and yeah. Well, I I've been cutting hair a lot. Yeah. More than you, yeah. Because I've been doing it since my since I was growing up, but not professionally, everybody, just <laughs> various men in my life. I cut my stepfather's hair a couple of times. It started with my grandfather. He needed a haircut and uh, was an invalid. And so I cut it for him. I was very, quite young doing that, but my grandmother, my grandparents had faith that I'd manage it somehow. And <laughs> so I did. You gotta love grandparents' faith in you, right? Yeah. I've never cut my father's hair. He cut my hair when I was growing up. <laughs> yeah, she remembers that well. Yeah. I think there was a time when he did the, like, tried to do the classic bowl cut. Oh, right. Oh, dear. And, and I was apparently having none of that. So um, I, I had taste from the age of three, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So I started getting specific in my requests. <laughs> and, he, you know, bless him. He was really game. Uh, Lillian says, lots of videos on how to cut hair. Never yeah. make a straight horizontal cut, but rather cut into the hair from a slant. Yes, that way it falls properly. Ruth says, perhaps you guys could video the next haircut so we can all see it. Smile. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Maybe me doing yours. Yeah. You, you, <laughs> well, it just depends. Kim would do the how to one, and I'd do the uh, slapstick version. <laughs> and it would be quite a long video. It would be a very Cal's long video. Case. Kim was very patient. It took me hours. <laughs> and everyone would watch the first five minutes and go, like, 
This is going to take forever. <laughs> Forget it. Uh, all just all just part of our adventures in life. Val says, where do you get the repositionable glue? Well, it's just a Elmer's glue stick. It's just a, a special version of it. So I would just check all the usual places for Elmer's glue sticks, like Walmart and Staples and, you know, so on. Art supply stores too, you know. But I'd start at non-art supply stores, just maybe save a, a buck. Annie says her daughter uses a number two setting on the trimmer for her husband. Ha ha. Yeah, exactly. I know our nephew has a cut or he used to, it may have changed since then. Um, a cut he liked where, you know, the sides and the back were one setting and the top was another setting. And then that was it. Cause he, he likes to be minimum fuss about everything and, Lillian says, my mother had a natural talent for cutting hair. So she had everyone in the post-World War II refugee camps coming to her. Wow. Oh, well, that's great. I mean, great at the camps. Which, yeah. I mean, it's it's one of those, I need to feel human. I need my hair cut thing, right? And if she could do that for people, that's just wonderful. Uh, truly a gift in that context. Kim. Yes, my dear. Can you look up what year the Wright brothers mm -hmm. flew? Their first successful flight? Yeah, in fact, I think this is a glider, so it's probably not that, but anyway. Find out. I, don't know, I might use it Do you it want anyway. me to look up glider flight tests? Sure. Because... Nineteen o two glider, nineteen eleven glider. Is that this is a pretty iconic image? So is that that looks very close to the nineteen o two glider? All right, design. we'll go with nineteen o two. Huh. Oh wait, no, there it is. Okay, good. Yeah, the Smithsonian has a thing on on uh, the Wright brothers. That would make sense. So I'm I'm getting a few things from the uh, Ontario the driver's handbook from the Ontario government. Um, one of which is a uh, warning sign for a curve, and if you flip it on its side, it's like a lift off. So I thought that would be kind That's of fun. fun. And I'm cutting out uh, page numbers, which in this guide happen to come in red boxes. And so I'm piecing together 1902 with that. <laughs> I don't know whether I'll actually do that or not, but I thought I'll get them and see. That's Cal and his uh, fine motor control fingers that he's cool with fussing with little little tiny bits. Well, I, I would be less inclined to, I'm not, I, there are circumstances in which I'll do it, but just I'm depend, more reluctant than you are. Just depends on the circumstances, right? If it's, if yeah. it's important enough to you, then the tolerance goes up, right? Yeah. But I'll never forget in grade 12 doing an aptitude test and the guidance counselor uh, you know, going through the results with me, it was quite comprehensive. It was a substantial amount of testing. And he said, well, your your future as a, a factory assembly line worker is not bright. And it was because of my, my manual dexterity. Even though I, like, I do so much with my hands in what I do now, but I do them with the hands I have, right? And that's, I think, the, 
the thing. So <laughs> work with the hands you have. <laughs> yeah, don't don't chop don't off trade, other people's don't hands. Don't trade them in. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's it. I think it speaks though to the um, the myth of you have to have certain natural gifts in order to do something. I'm not saying it doesn't help, but you know, you. Yeah, the ways totally. in which you have to adapt because of your peculiarities can actually be the making of you as an artist. That's, Some, I think, what I'm getting yeah. at. Yeah. And so many, I've read so many stories about artists who have had particular problems and how they have adapted to that or harnessed it yeah. has been the making of, or at least a significant aspect of what their work looks like, how they go about it, yeah. that makes it different than everyone else. So lots of, unfortunately, lots of people think, oh, I've got this problem, so I can't dot, dot, dot. Yeah. Um, with art, it can, it can be a real asset. I'm not wishing injury or disability or any of that on anyone, but I've read, you know, so many things about, um, oh, he has a tremor, so he draws like this, and it looks way more interesting. Um, Chuck Close had that massive, it wasn't a stroke, but it was some kind of a... Um, it attacked his spine. Yeah, some so kind of he, disease he, that attacked he, he his basically spine. was doing hyper-realistic paintings, and he had already started to switch away from those. Um, to be more looser and abs more abstract, but then he had this thing where he lost his ability to walk and large amounts of motor control. So now he straps his paintbrush to his hand, um, tapes it, I think, and works with that. And he, it's, his work is great because his brain is there, right? His brain and his heart are still intact. So the hand does what he can make it do and it doesn't do what he can't and it just makes the work. Yeah, so, it's you know? brilliant. And I had a student years ago in a life drawing class. He used to be a, a television director and producer. And um, he had Parkinson's, pretty advanced. And um, <clears throat> so, of course, he took medication to control the muscle tremors in order to come to class. And um, one day I had a class in which I said to him, you actually have a head start on everyone here because I need to get the most irregular, expressive mark making you can possibly manage. I said, so this is a chance for your, what normally is a drawback to become allow you to shine asset, right yeah yeah and uh and so he did the exercise we were doing and it was such a profound revelation to him um he actually he burst into tears um it was one of my most moving teaching moments yeah and um yeah very special guy yeah Yeah, that was really something. I've got lots of chat I need to catch up on here. All so right. Lillian us. continues about her mom. She asks her mom where she managed to get scissors. Well, that's a good question. Yeah. And Gunta asks, did the, the picks inspire the theme for this week? It was the other way around, wasn't it, Cal? You yeah, yeah. Looking for picks. Yeah, no, I, I, I write the theme and then I <laughs> try and come up with something for it. Like you guys, yeah. <laughs> you, you read the theme and go, hmm. Yeah. Right? Slade says, 1903, first powered flight at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Right. And so this is one of the gliders. Yeah. So, so not a not a powered flight. So I think the 1902 date is a, a it's, decent it's one to close. work with. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Close enough. Uh, on the Smithsonian page, they made reference to a 1900 glider. Um that there's very little 
visual documentation of. They right, have a, right. a couple of rare photos and that's it. Right. Um, <clears throat> Joy says, Cal would cut my hair with great precision and thoughtfulness. And then he's she's got a smiley face <laughs> with a, a halo on top. You're <laughs> quite right. That That's why it was slow, uh, Joy, because Cal, you can see him making the collage, right? The, even the way he holds his hands. He's very... Uh, he likes to be precise. He likes, he's sensitive to what he's doing. So yeah. Sherry says, what makes you different also makes you unique. Yeah, it's exactly. Absolutely exactly. true. Yeah. Ricky says the very first session you emphasized working with what you have, the subversive nature of collage you were talking about materials, but the same applies for our physical bodies. That's why I stay. Aw. Aw. Nah. <laughs> thank you, Ricky. Yeah, thank you. That's... That's so lovely. Joy writes, that is so special. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I had completely forgotten that, but obviously you hadn't, Rick, either, which is lovely. Yeah. Cal's blushing. Is he? Yeah. I'm not surprised. Yeah, me neither. But in fact, it's not about me. It's about you guys. Ooh, I like the way this is going. And it's 3.32. Holy moly. Yeah, I know. It's hard to believe. Ruth says, I would love to see how many pieces of art the two of you have in your house. It's, it's a little frightening. Ruth. Yeah, it is. <laughs> she says, you must live in a mansion. That's hilarious. You know, it's fun. We used to live in a, not a mansion by any stretch, but a, a spacious house. It was four bedrooms, two and a half baths. You know, it had a family room and a living room, a dining room and a breakfast room, big basement. I mean, it was, we loved that house. And we moved to this much smaller, that was a brand new house we had bought uh, before it was even a hole in the ground. And uh, we moved to this house because we needed to change our life. And uh, we thought smaller house, bigger life. So we move into here and we got what we asked for. But oh man, do we wish we had that old house. Not the neighborhood. We didn't like the neighborhood but the culture of the neighborhood, but... Um, the neighborhood defined bourgeois um, because everyone there was like, it, there, it was majorly keeping up with the Joneses. Um, and it was hard to avoid it. People spent as much on their driveway surfacing, fancy surfacing, as we had spent on our used Honda. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so and, that tells you the. If, uh, if we could have like teleported the house somewhere else, it, oh, was, a, it was a we lovely loved house, that house and nice and spacious, like very spacious. Yeah. Oh, that's a paper cut. It's like um, a center hall plan for those of you who are uh, savvy to these things. Kind of a, I think, Georgian basis, although it also resembled a larger version of. Um, a really simple Ontario farmhouse design with the gable centered gable at the front over a porch that went across the front. Anyway, we had lots of space for 
woodworking shop, workout space. Uh, we had a, a design studio where we eventually had two people coming in to help. And we had a, a one of the bedrooms because it was just Kim and I, we, we had a bedroom dedicated to be an art room. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we spent less time in the art room than, than just about any, other, any room. other room in the house. I had a library, one of the smaller bedrooms I turned into a library, one of my all time dreams. Yeah. So it was, it was quite telling and, and we were, Kim was very sick and I was working like a dog. Mm -hmm. So it was no life, you know? Yeah, and it wasn't it, a life. Which is which was really interesting. Sad. Yeah, sad and, and but also telling. Um, yeah. And we still dream about that house because we loved it. But yeah, we didn't love the way the neighborhood was. Oh my God. Yeah. You know, there was a there was a, a plan that there was supposed to be a, a some kind of a seniors residence put in, you know, a low rise building kind of thing uh, at one corner of the neighborhood because this was a new neighborhood. And there was a big meeting and I wasn't at the meeting because I was too ill, but I heard later from from one of our neighbors. There were people who said they absolutely didn't want that senior residence there because they didn't want a lot of old people walking around the neighborhood. And I'm like, you, you like, seriously, I just wanted to put a bullet in my head. Why am I living in a place that has people like that? <laughs> you know, just beyond. I mean that just no clue clearly psychopaths what, what, what lived makes in the neighborhood. for a complete society, right? Yeah. Or like, a complete community. There are children in the neighborhood, but you don't want any grandparents in the neighborhood? Like yeah, what? like oh um, it just yeah. I mean, on a thousand different levels, right? It was just horrible. Yes, neighborhood is hugely important, Ruth. Slade asks, where was the neighborhood? It's it was uh in Mrs. Northern Mississauga near the 401 and Mississauga Road. The houses were built um they didn't look like a, a standard Mississauga housing development with the garage sticking out front. They were built with garages in the back um and and the houses relatively close to the street a bit of a new urbanism feel to it um oh yeah remember how huge our garage was just our garage was enormous i mean the as artists we would kill for the space yeah. we had now now we really <laughs> wish we could move back now we're ex squeezed except for into... some some except oh, for yeah, all that but exactly yeah. um Oh my God, old people, we will all be there if we are lucky. Well, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, on, it, it just, it's just unspeakable to me that what that says about any of those people. Uh, Sherry says, are they going to Benjamin Button aging? Yeah, right. Apparently, some people are deluded enough to think that they're somehow going to escape old age. And, you know, it's my fond hope that they do too. <laughs> <laughs> and he says three plus generation neighborhoods encourages respect and wisdom and learning. Absolutely. And um, it's a healthier environment. I mean, I, what would I have done, for example, without my grandparents? Um, just, yeah, inconceivable. I was lucky enough to have one set uh, alive. And um, also, I used to, my grandmother worked at a senior's residence. So I'm a little sensitive to the topic of senior's residences. She actually worked at one while I was in high school. And um, so I used to visit regularly because I'd have dinner with her at least once a week there. And, uh, and then eventually I got my first teaching job 
uh, teaching seniors at the residence where she was. She was the social director and it was fantastic. What a great learning experience, you know, and it wasn't until I was, I had gotten into teaching as an adult, you know, this, this kind of teaching, art teaching, that um, I didn't remember right away that I had actually done that before. I forget how someone asked me about my teaching background, I guess, and I finally remembered. But it was um, a delight. I used to go around. There were some of some of the residents uh, I became quite friendly with, and so when I would go for dinner, I would, if I could, I'd go a bit early and and. Uh, have a little tea time with someone or um, just a little chat and visit in their room. And yeah, just amazing. Joy says, those are our elders offering us wisdom and life learning stories. Exactly. I mean, my God, there was this one man, Major Horn, British army guy with the fabulous white mustache. He was at least six foot two at the age of 95. Yeah, and he fought so, in the Boer War or something. Yeah, didn't he? he went. He lied about his age, and he went to the Boer War and lived in South Africa for decades. He loved South Africa, like the the landscape, the light, the warmth, the um, and all of that. And um, and then when he retired or whatever, you know, I don't know all of his history, but. He thought he'd go back to England and he couldn't believe how depressing that was because he was used to all this light and warmth. And there he was back in, you know, England's beautiful, but it's got a lot of gray and a <laughs> lot of damp. Right. Yeah. Um, and so one of his sons had moved to Stratford. He's an artist, actually a sculptor. Um, he may not be alive anymore. And um, so he moved to Canada on that basis and um he was actually a colonel in the army although his his sort of nickname was major horn and his stories i mean i could have listened to him day after day he was just full of incredible stories and there's so it's so important you know we're not we're not islands we're 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 on a continuum a human continuum it's important to hear those stories. Val says, well, we all know those old people are extremely dangerous. <laughs> just got a laughing face. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, they are because they're subversive, some of them, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because uh, they got less to lose. They're it's like they don't have to worry about what people think. That's right. And Alice is saying goodbye. Bye, Alice. All right, Alice. Take Hope care. You Thank fun. you so much for stopping by. And we'll see you at uh, a few days from now on in Collage Land. And I should say it's 342. Yeah, so, so you're I, ready to share? Yeah, so I'm going to share Great. with it. It may not be quite done, but this is as far as I've got. This is so how we'll wrap up. Yeah, so I'll just get so I can see if that shows it reasonably well. That's good, yeah. It's got, uh, unfortunately... Can you show what that little diagrammy thing is in the lower left corner? Sure. Go closer up with that. Because it's sort of intriguing looking, and I couldn't tell from the... Yeah. Yeah, so I took a few um, things from the driver's handbook and sort of played with them. A green light with a green arrow pointing up instead. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> and the uh, the warning sign pointing up as well. And I I use that little bit that says ups and downs from that I found earlier. So, so cool. yeah. And then this one is work in progress. It's sort of I got this far and I wasn't sure where how much further to go or so. It probably needs more, but I wasn't sure what so. So Ruth says, very cool collage. <laughs> uh, thanks, Ruth. So feel free to, uh, well, obviously, post one or more collages in the virtual collage jam. And I, I took a look this morning, and I'm still behind, but I'm, I'm catching up. I'm 
you guys are posting like mad, which is lovely. And thank you for being such an active part of the community. And next week is um, our last summer week already until the fall. So um, a couple of things, actually. So next week, it's going to the theme is going to be one person's trash, dot, dot, dot. Um, and so we can start thinking about that now. And come fall, um, we have, you have a date for when we start, right? Let me look. Kim is going to check the calendar. But come fall, we are going to do the collage jam every other week. And we're going to do Kim's uh, studio. Virtual, virtual studio virtual, party. Virtual studio party every other week. But on the same day, which will be a Saturday, 2 p.m. We'll just alternate And we'll alternate. Them. So one week it'll be Kim, one week it'll be Cal, and back and forth. So it will always be on a Saturday. So those of you who work can uh, can join us. As always, there will be recordings. Um, and you can, if collage is your thing, you can definitely work on it during Kim's and for yeah. the, and, and the other way around, too. Like, if you're enjoying what Kim is doing, you can do that during the collage jam as well so so uh, saturday september the 19th is when we will be back yep with september 19th. virtual studio party and we'll kick off with kim and then the following then saturday will be cal's collage so jam the first collage jam will and be, then we'll just be alternating that's that? the 26th 26th of uh september september yes it's a saturday yeah. 2 p.m uh just watch for uh we'll we'll post in the group we may do a combined channel yeah, uh, so that you can go to the same channel, same channel every time week. rather than like figuring out whose channel is it at. But, but there well, are drawbacks to that for us. Yeah. So uh, we may just alternate between our channels and post. We'll get it figured out for yeah. you guys so that it uh, and make it as trouble free as we can. As we can. Exactly. Yeah. So. Thank you again so much for joining us. And uh, and virtual studio party happens next Saturday. Okay. And uh, one more Saturday. Do you have one more? Or is yeah, next? I have two more virtual studio parties. Okay, so two more virtual studio parties on Saturdays at 2 and one more Claude Jam next Monday at 2. And hope Before to see you there. Break. Yeah. Okay. All right. Take, Take care, care guys. everybody. Thank you so much for coming out.